Good afternoon. My name is Michael Coucher and I proudly serve as the superintendent and principal of the Calvert Catholic School. On behalf of the Calvert Catholic School's board of directors, administration, faculty and staff, I would like to welcome all of you to Calvert High School's 89th commencement exercises. At this time, I invite Father Keyshard, Calvert's chaplain to the podium for the introduction of this year's Bishop Cross recipients. On May 24, at the baccalaureate mass for the class of 2016, I had the honor of announcing the recipients of the Bishop's Cross for the graduating class. The Bishop's Cross is the highest honor a Catholic high school in the Diocese of Toledo can award. It was after consultation with faculty and staff, the administration and our pastors that we were able to announce that Alison Hudson and Drew Ritzler are this year's recipients of the Bishop's Cross. Since they are good examples and role models of living a life of faith, it is only fitting that they lead us in prayer today. And so now I invite Alison Hudson to come forward for our opening prayer. May this graduation day be a celebration of your life within us. We give you all the learning, the skills, and the hard work of these years. We pour out our hearts as we continue on our adventure. Father, may we live a life that reveals your hope and be guided in everything we do by your everlasting truth. Amen. Now for a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be 
Good afternoon. Today is a truly wonderful day. It is great to have so many family members, friends, and supporters of the class of 2016 at Calvary Catholic Schools. This year, I'm proud to present our first speaker, Salute Victoria, Nick Felton. Good afternoon. First, friends, teachers, and acquaintances for coming here today. I think I speak for all of us up on this stage in saying that we truly we remain healthy and happy. Speaking of happiness, I think that it's safe to say that so far, for the most part, we have all lived generally happy lives. Of course, we have all gone through hardships, but right now we're all alive, we're all graduating, so I would like to think that everyone's happiness levels are pretty high. Unfortunately, as we leave the well-known streets of Tiffany and the even better known halls of Calvert, life will inevitably get harder. Finding ways to remain happy throughout our lives is difficult. But in order to find ways to stay happy, we must first ask ourselves, what makes us happy? And I looked at what made them happy. And when I started to think about this, about what made myself and my peers happy, one thing kept coming up. Making our dreams become For example, I thought about what made Drew, one of my friends, celebrate that accomplishment with those close to him. So, from these examples and others, I concluded that if we want to be happy, we must work toward our dreams to make them become real. However, this is easier said than done. We often encounter disappointment, frustration, and failure along the way. So in order to help out myself and my fellow graduates, I have put together four key ideas that we should focus on when trying to achieve our dreams. So without further ado, number one. Number one, keep God first. This is the first and most important idea because without God, everything I have said so far and everything I will say means nothing. God is happiness. Achieving our goals only facilitates this happiness because through reaching our maximum potential, we use the talent God gave us to the best of our abilities. And everywhere we go after we leave here, and just everything we do, we must always, always keep God first. Number two, we need to remember that in order to make our dreams become reality, our ideals must match our values. It is often because their ideals do not match their, va their values. Someone may have the goal of being a great baseball player, but value sleep more than practice. Or someone may have the goal of being the top of their, at the top of their class, but they value partying more than studying. So when we fail, we must first look at our values, as that is often where the problems lie. Number three, we need to understand that everything in this world is pliable. This world we live in can be and demands to be changed. We must not go through life believing that this is how things are and this is how they will be. Rather, we must understand that the world around us is ours to mold and sign. Not only do we have the power to change the world, but it is necessary that we do so. And number four, find whatever it is that you are good at and do it every day for the rest of your lives. This seems so simple, but often it isn't. People are often frustrated with themselves and the life, the life they're leading because they aren't doing what they love. Do what they love or doing what they're good at. Adam Recker plays a lot of football because he's good at it. Allison Huss enjoys working on her art because she's good at it. As humans, we love striving in what we do, so we do what we're good at. I challenge every one of my fellow graduates to find what you're good at and do it every single day for the rest of your lives. As I conclude, I want to quickly review. Number one, keep God first. Number two, our ideals must match our values. Number three, this world is pliable. And number four, find what you are good at. And finally, I would like to leave you today with a quote. Mark Twain once said, the two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. So with that thought in mind, I have one final challenge for my fellow graduates, myself, and all of you here today. Find out why. Thank you and God bless.
Thank you, Nick. This afternoon, we are honored to have two dollar victorious, Sidney Burlicamp and Morgan Smith. I would first like to invite <laughs> Sidney to speak. Friends that we keep for the rest of our lives, and that means we're really all in this together. 
Once at Seneca, always at Seneca. Congratulations, class of 2016. Good afternoon. Before I begin, I would like to take the time to thank all parents, teachers, faculty, and staff who have helped us graduates along our journey to graduation. I know we can be a handful at times, but despite that, you all never lost faith in us and in our potential. I think I can speak for everyone in saying that we are very appreciative of the many sacrifices that have been made for us and are thankful to have had such amazing mentors and role models over the years. I would also like to congratulate Nick on being named Salatorian and Sydney for being named Valdetorian. It honestly feels like a dream come true to share this achievement with my childhood best friend. I guess the many tedious hours of playing school in my basement as kids finally paid off. I may be biased, but I feel that the class of 2016 has been one of the most outstanding classes in Calvert High School history. While we are small in number, we make up for our lack of numbers and talent. Whether athletically, academically, artistically, or socially, our class has never failed to impress. However, our talent is not the reason why I feel our class is historic. Over the years, the class of 2016 has seemed to get the short end of the stick. Whether it was never getting to be the leaders of the school through the many changes in buildings, the, the cancellation of the eighth grade play the year it was our turn, or the many changes in administration during our time, we never seemed to be able to catch a break. Additionally, the class of 2016 has experienced a great deal of trial and tribulation on an individual level. Each and every student has experienced his or her fair share of setbacks and disappointments, both big and small. However, despite the short ends of the stick we have received and the many setbacks we have faced, we have never failed to come out stronger than before with interlinked arms. When we are not down, we get back up with the help and encouragement of each other. When the odds are stacked against us, we come together finally to beat those odds. When we are feeling down, it doesn't take long to find a classmate to build us back up again. Simply put, our class is made up of incredibly strong and determined people who want the best for each other. While people may see our many accomplishments and successes through the titles we have earned, the hardware we have been awarded, and the ink we have class so special, our unity. Our unity, class of 2016, is why we will be remembered as one of the greatest classes to walk the halls of Calvert High School. As we end our high school careers and begin a new chapter of our lives, I hope you all follow your dreams and do what makes you happy. Each and every one of you have grown into outstanding individuals who have the power to change the world, or to quote the football team, hashtag South. If you take anything from today, remember that to leave a legacy and to achieve greatness does not mean to get money and recognition, but rather to positively influence those you come into contact with. Class of 2016, and most importantly, believe that you can do absolutely anything you put your mind to. Congratulations, Class of 2016. It has been an incredible Thank you, Morgan. At this time, Mr. Coucher, Principal and Superintendent of Calvary Catholic School, Father Joseph Zipka, Pastor of St. Joseph's Parish, and Father Gary Walter, Pastor of St. Mary's Parish, will confer the diplomas to our seniors. Please hold your calls until all the diplomas have been awarded so that all may hear your sons and daughters.
Sydney, Warren. Gabrielle Marie Bennett. Lindsay Ann Bickley. Phyllis Thomas Bowe. Brianne Renee Cooper. Noah Jacob Francis. Corinne Marie Harris. Bailey Trenton Pickman. Matthew Aaron Hoffman. Haley Ryan Capalco. Brian Matthew Kennedy. Danielle Marie Tonta. Joseph Edward Kajewski. Kerrigan Marie Quiet. Mallory Kathleen Paul. Amber Lynn Perry. Adam Richard Drecker. Cassandra Lynn Reinhardt. Taylor Nicole Ritzler. Callie Nicole Rohrbach. Samuel Frederick Shell Hall. Jeffrey Lynn Shook III. Abilene Michelle Stewart. Katie Michelle Teal. Alexandria Lynn. Sydney Ann Burlikin. Morgan Lee Smith. Nicholas Jacob Felter. Allison Nicole Huss. Drew Thomas Whistler. <laughs> Graduates, please stand. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to present 
to you, the class of 2016. These young men and women would like to honor and thank you, their parents, and others who have made sacrifices and gave them support they needed for the last four years, and for many, the last 12 years of Catholic education. Students, you may take your time for friends. These families have had two children graduate from Calvin High School. Amy and Dave Allen. Shelly and Tim Felter, son Nicholas. <laughs> Candy Wright and Dan Francis, son Noah. 
Ricky and James Hoffman, son Matthew. <laughs> Mary and Philip Huss, daughter Allison. Stephanie Moyer and Michael Robot, daughter Callan. Mandy Maddox, son Devin. <laughs> Dr. Bonnie and Greg Teal, daughter Katie. These families have had three children graduate from Calvin High School. Gina and Brian Bennett, daughter Gabrielle. Jan and Mark Contact, daughter Danielle. Karen and Larry Whistler, daughter Taylor. These families have had four children graduate from Calvin High School. Gail and Thomas Bowes, son, Philip. <laughs> Linda and Anthony Perry, daughter, Amber. Congratulations. <laughs> At this time, senior class coordinator, Drew Ritzler, will now present the senior class gift. Alright, thank you. Well, I have a list of thank yous to thank everyone, but I think our three speakers earlier covered those, so I forgot to pay attention. So, <laughs> uh, so our class, we're trying to figure out what we wanted to give to gift, whether we're talking to the Jesus class, at lunch, wherever it was, and we're like, what do we want? And then we realized it's not really what we want because it's a gift for the school. So we asked Mr. Roman and Mr. Coucher what they think we need to give. And we would like to present them in the school, and not right now because it's not finished. Um, we will be donating a press to put on the front of this ambo. We'll have the college press um, represent. And depending on the price, we've also be donating a few more folding chairs to do our class mats. Thank you, Drew and seniors. When the first class graduated from Calvert High School in the spring of 1927, Cardinal Scritch, then the Bishop of Toledo, offered them a challenge, which was printed in the first Calvertana yearbook. At this time, Michelle Palm, in the class of 1996, would like to offer that challenge to our seniors again today. There is a debt that you owe to Calvert High School, which must consume more lives and pain. Calvert demands that you need be men and women of deep faith. Religion must be the dominant force in your life, for heaven is your ultimate goal. Calvert demands that you be men and women of that fine patriotism which your religion enjoys as a distinct face of the virtue of charity. Never must you say, even in the secrecy of your hearts, that you are not your brother's keeper, but ever you must be remembered, must remember that you have a social duty to your fellow countrymen. Calvert demands that you never neglect an opportunity for self-improvement or the acquisition of useful knowledge. A trained and well-informed intellect is, when combined with sturdy Christian character, is the world's greatest force. Calvert demands that you be ever, even in your leisure, occupied. No life is so useless as an idol life. No excuse so false as I could have done better. Only a few years are allotted to you. Please, you dare not waste. Those are great words to live by. In keeping with tradition, I would like Taylor Harris, class of 2019, sister of senior, senior Corinne Harris, will deliver the senior challenge.
share shared human connections, your relationships with friends, family, and community. For four years, you've had impressed upon you the importance of higher education, a career, dedication, faith, service, and hard work. This is true, but as important as your obligations as a college student, sailor, airman, soldier, and someday as a doctor, lawyer, business leader, priest, nun, brother, barber, sanitation worker, garbage collector, or a parent will be, you're a human being first. Those human connections with spouse, with children, with friends, and your family are the most important investments you will ever make. At the end of your life, you will never regret having <coughs> passed one more test, not winning one more big game, or not closing one more big deal, or earning one more big buck. You will regret spending time, not spending time with your husband or wife, your children, a friend or a parent. The hope of the future as a country and as a family rests with you. Go out and enjoy life, but more importantly, make a difference. Make a difference in your community, for Calvary, for the country, or just within your own circle of friends or your family. Be the best plumber, teacher, truck driver, fireman, paramedic, parent, cook, or military person you can be. But above all, be the best human being you can be. Thank you, Taylor. <coughs> Class of 2016, I welcome you as graduates and proud alumni of Calvert High School. <laughs> on behalf of the entire Calvert community, I'd like to congratulate you on this very special day, your high school graduation. You have worked very hard for this day and should be very proud of yourself and very proud of all the wonderful things that you have accomplished. I am confident that you all will accomplish great things in the years to come. Parents, congratulations to you as well, and thank you for entrusting your sons and daughters to us, and thank you for your confidence in our schools. Graduates, this is a time to give thanks for the many blessings that you have received over the past 12 years. First and foremost, you should be thankful to God for his many blessings that he has bestowed upon you and for, and for providing you with your unique gifts and your special talents. Secondly, you should be thankful to your parents for their support and for the sacrifices that they have made to send you to the Calvert Catholic Schools. Thirdly, you should be thankful to your teachers for their commitment and dedication to your education. And lastly, you should be thankful to your classmates for their support and guidance along the way. We have supplied you with the necessary tools to be successful, and now it is up to you to go out and transform the world. God bless all of you, and may God bless the people that you will become. This concludes Calvert High School's 89th commencement exercises. I now welcome Drew Ritzler, Calvert Bishop's Cross recipient to the podium for the closing prayer.
the Lord be with you. Through the intercession of Mary, the mother of God, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Please remain standing and join the class of 2016 in the singing of the Calvert High School alma mater. 